big data is all the rage. Companies are trying to figure out what that means, how to build projects for it, how to look for oil among the, all the uh, huge databases that Chevron, for instance, is uh, uh, experiencing. But how do you build one? How, how do you, do you go with cloud? Do you go with your own servers? Do you go with SQL or no SQL? Well, we're gonna talk to Clustrix right now and talk about what they're doing for big data world. No. Who are you? So I'm Sergei Tsarev, I'm the CTO of uh, Clustrix, and I've been working on databases for about the last 15 uh, years. Very cool. So um, this new world, uh, you know, when people say big data, and that seems to be all the rage, I mean, GigaOM seems like he, he has a new article on it every day. How do you fit into this world? Uh, you know, CTOs have to decide, do they put their data on a cloud server somewhere, mm -hmm. like on Amazon or Rackspace Cloud? Or do they go with a, a non-SQL approach, you know, no-SQL approach? Like right. It, it's a very complex uh, market uh, right now. There's uh, quite a few players in, in, in the landscape. And the way that Clustrix looks at it is there's really um, multiple types of um, database usages out there that people need to design for. So there's your operational store. So if you're an e-commerce web app, all of the orders, all of your inventory that goes into the operational store. Uh, things like clickstream analysis, so every click that uh, gets recorded into a log file somewhere that you want to do business intelligence on, that goes into some sort of an analytics solution, right? So that's yep. traditionally what people think of as big data. You have petabytes and petabytes of uh, log files. How do you analyze it? How do you make sense of it? There's companies that do just that. Exactly, right. And then there's a, a whole set of kind of uh, niche solutions. So for example, um, your primary database, um, something like a MySQL, can do a uh, free text search, but it's not very good at it. So you have uh, specific storage engines like Solar, Lucene, who do just the text search part uh, of that solution. And so when you look at a modern application, there's really a whole set of databases that are, are employed. You have your text search databases, you have your graph databases, you have your operational data stores, you have analytics, you have uh, you know, key value object stores. Um, it's, it's, it's really quite complex. And uh, it is a challenge for Clustrix to help uh, explain where exactly uh, we fit in into that ecosystem. So where do you fit in? So we are going uh, right after the uh, the relational, the operational data store. So this is the heart of the system. This is the primary kind of the authoritative source for the data for uh, the application. So when I talked to Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, he was talking about sharding his databases right. across many, many machines, and that's how they achieve that web scale, right? That's is, right. You have a different approach, which is what? That's right. So traditionally, that's exactly how folks would scale. They uh, figured out that uh, scale up doesn't work. You can only go so far with scale up. If you look at Zuckerberg, he can, you know, he has infinite amount of money essentially, and they can only buy a machine so big, um, and it won't fit uh, all of the users that they have. They won't actually uh, uh, service all of the workload. So the only way they could solve this problem at the time was to take their data sets, break it up to little manageable pieces or shard, and have little databases for a portion of their data set. And what Clustrix is doing is we're making a product um, that builds that into a single system. So internally, the database breaks, that, breaks the data set up into little pieces for you. And it's incrementally scalable with just regular commodity hardware. But to the application, it looks like a single instance database. Yeah. So from the application developer perspective, you don't have to worry about uh, designing your application um, figuring out how to make it talk to uh, lots of different databases, figuring out how you're going to do fault tolerance, figuring out how you're going to partition your data sets. And there are lots of other inherent problems in uh, trying to do it that way as well. Now, this requires you to buy a box and put it in a data center, right? It, you right. can't run this on the cloud. Right, so the current solution that Clustrix ships is an appliance. So it's an integrated commodity hardware with software and support uh, built in. Uh, our next uh, model is actually uh, going to be database as a service. So we have uh, a new relationship that we're announcing with uh, Rackspace that's uh, going to allow Rackspace customers to point their applications at um, our databases running within the uh, Rackspace infrastructure. And in a little while, we'll actually have a software-only solution as well that you can run on the cloud. 
Yeah. So if a customer already built a, a company or a project around mm -hmm. MySQL, do they have to change anything about their app to get it to run on Clustrix? No, most of the time, no. So it's, uh, it, it's drop-in. Uh, we reverse engineered all the MySQL protocols. And there's no MySQL code base in Clustrix at all. It's all from the ground up. It's a uh, you know, fundamentally distributed relational uh, database engine. Yeah. But it's MySQL compatible, so most customers just drop it in and it works. How do you know you need Clustrix? Because what, what, you know, not everybody needs yeah, Clustrix. There's yeah. lots of companies running on just MySQL or yeah. running on a NoSQL uh, environment. W when do I know, know yeah. that I need to call you? So our sweet spot use case is folks who are getting kind of to the end of the line with what they can do with their existing single instance database. So they bought a lot of expensive hardware. These are pretty beefy boxes. They bought some uh, flash storage. And simply the amount of data volume and the amount of concurrency that the application is generating um, is their database is no longer keeping up. So they start looking for alternative solutions. Do they go the sharding route? Do they try to go with NoSQL? Or do they go with something like Clustrix that allows them to just continue developing an application without having to worry about database scalability? And so that has been our sweet spot customer. Um, but there are also some customers who are uh, interested in fault tolerance. Mm -hmm. So MySQL replication is, is, is quite gnarly. <laughs> it's difficult to administer. There are a lot of problems with it. And so um, even if you get a three node cluster from Clustrix, uh, there's quite a bit of value uh, in that because if a component fails, if a node fails or a drive fails, the cluster automatically repairs that fault and the database uh, stays up. And so you can just replace it. So when you said three node database, what does that mean? Three separate machines? In three the separate data machines, that's right. Okay, and so that's if right. one of them fails, everything's already backed up. That's all, right. the all the transactions, is it fully what they call acid compliant? That's right, it's, everything is durable. It looks like your traditional single instance database, but the architecture internally is fundamentally different. So all of your queries are parallelized. So you know, if you go from a three node cluster to a nine node cluster to an 18 node cluster, you get a linear performance increase and capacity increase. So one of our customers um, actually went through multiple uh, cluster expansions already. They started off with a three node system. They're now with a nine node system. And by the end of the summer, they're probably going to be a 15 node system because they can just start adding boxes to the database as their uh, um, growth curve ex expands. I, I noticed uh, one of the nice things about Clustrix is, is it shows you what the cost of each uh, query is, mm -hmm. you know, it, and, and that helps you optimize your system because you know where your time is being spent, your processor time. Yeah, that's right. So one of, the, one of the problems that we're seeing in the industry now is that, or maybe it's not a problem, it's just the way that the industry is headed is this whole DevOps movement. So you have developers uh, taking on roles that were uh, traditionally operations roles, and so they're less and less DBAs and operations uh, folks out there who are running the infrastructure, and more of that is falling on the developer. And the developers, they're not necessarily in-depth DBAs. Um, it's difficult for them to walk up to a database system, figure out what's uh, underperforming, figure out what set of queries that they need to focus on. And so one of the things that Clustrix did is actually built a whole set of tools into the database that helps developers understand what their application is doing with the database and what they need to do inside of the application to optimize the workload. So at any moment in time, you can walk up to the database and ask it, you know, what are my top 10 queries? What percent of database traffic are they driving? What can I do to actually help optimize those queries? So um, that's something that's just built into the product in a you know, very easy to use interface. Yeah. What else uh, should we talk about that helps developers build database-centric systems and get, get value out of these big data stores that are being built up? Yeah, I think the one thing I would say is that um, you shouldn't give up features that you find in traditional databases. So if you look at a lot of the kind of the NoSQL crowd, um, their mantra is SQL doesn't scale, and the reason SQL doesn't scale is because it's relational, and re we know that relational transactions, all of that stuff is slow, and uh, you should just throw it away and start building your application that way, using one of our NoSQL stores. Yeah. And um, what you see, actually what ends up happening is that the application still needs consistency, right? If you make a post or you put something in your shopping cart and then you go to read the shopping cart and there's nothing in the shopping cart, all of a sudden, right, that's a, that's a fundamental consistency problem that if the database is not doing that for you, somebody in the system has to do it, right? You start pulling yeah. that back into the application. That so works with Facebook because, you know, if a post is missing yeah. for 20 seconds, no big deal, right? right. But if, if you're trying to buy something and a, right. and a purchase isn't there when you try to buy, you go, what, the exactly. system's broken, right? Exactly. So, so folks are actually, 
uh, taking features that were traditionally found in a relational database and they're pulling it back into the application. And it's a lot of complexity that's getting sucked back into the application. And uh, you can sort of see how it started out, right? So you know, 10 years ago, folks are starting to see that they're building massively scalable architectures and they can't scale in a single instance database. So what do they do? They start sharding. Once they start sharding, they start losing some of the value that the database provided for it. So you can't run a transaction across multiple shards. So now we're throwing transactions out of the system and we're letting the application manage that. Right, and so the next evolutionary step is saying, well, if I shard it and I'm not using all these features, do I really need a relational database that provides me all these features because I'm paying for it, but I'm not using it, right? And so there's kind of this next movement that came along is NoSQL saying, well, let's, let's just set all of this aside and uh, let's have scalability at the cost of a lot of other things. And at Clustrix, we believe fundamentally that you don't need to throw away those features. Um, you end up needing them anyway. You just redesign them yourself ad hoc in the application. A lot of times you get it wrong and it's, it's trial and error. Um, it, it's, it's quite a complex problem. Yeah. And so, you know, Clustrix, we believe that the scalable database eventually is going to become a commodity. Just like 10 years ago, folks were trying to figure out how they're storing petabytes and petabytes of, of files, right? File data, pictures. Yeah. People are uploading pictures and people are building systems that um, are trying to figure out how they're going to distribute that across lots of different commodity boxes, just you know, lots of SATA drives sitting in a box somewhere. Now you build an application like that, like Instagram, right? They just point it at S3, yeah. right? Nobody sits there and thinks like, oh, I'm gonna redesign how S3 works, right? It's just commodity, it's available, I use it. Yeah. So that's where the database is headed as well, right? It, you want to have a fully featured database in the cloud. Sounds like you're predicting mm -hmm. that you're gonna be on the cloud soon too. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, how do you fit into the pricing? Because when I talk to people who are buying databases, they they sort of like the Oracle approach, but they really hate the pricing. Mm -hmm. And that's what's pushing them out into uh, you know, MySQL or into NoSQL uh, mm -hmm. iterations. Where do you fit into the price slope? Yeah, I, th I think especially uh, kind of in, 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 the web, in, in the web space, folks are looking for a predictable pricing model so they can say, I'm going to have this many users that are going to drive this many transactions. It's going to cost me this much a month. And so, um, you know, for those kinds of customers, uh, right now with the appliance, we're talking about a leasing model. Um, with the deal that we have with Rackspace, you know, we're talking about a leasing model that looks like, you know, there's a monthly cost to you for a certain amount of capacity. And in the cloud-based model, it's really just going to be a standard software model. So mm -hmm. it's just a per instance pricing. And the idea is because Clustrix is linearly scalable, you can, predict you know, this much capacity, this much transactional throughput is going to cost me this much. So they can plan, you know, plan the costs around their business. Very cool. Anything else we need to know about Clustrix and what, you, what you're doing? Uh, we're building some cool stuff and we have a lot of uh, great customers. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it, by the way? Clustrix.com. And are you on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that? A bunch of us are on Twitter, yes. Yeah. So I'm Sergei Tsar on Twitter. Very cool. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm.